fate dealt its hand on September 11th in determining who would survive and who would not. The losses, they were unbearable. One company suffered the worst single loss of that day. 658 people who came to work at Cantor Fitzgerald never went home. By a twist of fate, the company CEO survived because he took his son to his first day in kindergarten. His is a remarkable story of loss and renewal. You know, sometimes, sometimes it feels so long ago, like another life. And sometimes when I hear someone's name and I think of their face, I see their picture, it's, it's, it's yesterday. It's just not possible for everyone you work with and all your friends to die in your office. Howard Lutnick is the CEO of the international financial trading firm Cantor Fitzgerald, which occupied five floors of the North Tower, just above where American Airlines Flight 11 slammed into the building. His brother Gary, his best friend, and 200 employees he personally hired were among those who died. Howard had arranged to come in late that morning because of a family obligation. So I took my son to his first day of kindergarten. I have, that, I have that picture of him, you know, wet behind the ears with the little backpack on, and, uh, and that's where I was when the first plane hit, 8.46, two minutes before the plane hit. As black clouds of smoke turned a deep blue sky into gray ash, Lutnick raced to the North Tower, but quickly turned away as the South Tower began to collapse. I'm running my tail off from a black cloud of hurricane. I have no idea what's going on. So I dive under a car, and the hurricane just engulfs me and it's black and silent, and I assumed I died. Faced with insurmountable grief, Lutnick came to grips with reality. We have two choices. We can close the firm, go to our friends' funerals, or we'll have to work harder than we've ever worked before that we were gonna help the families of those we lost. But first, he had to make a tough decision. With his company going from earning a million dollars a day to losing a million a day, he angered families when he said he could no longer pay salaries of those lost. They think we're doing something wrong. <laughs> can't pay the salaries. I don't have any money to pay the salaries. So we would have gone out of business in an, in an hour if I tried to worry about how I looked. This was survival. Lutnick was determined to rebuild his company and keep his pledge to help the families. We told them we'd give them 25% of everything we earned and we'd pay for their health care for 10 years. He kept his word, and over the first five years, the families received more than $180 million. Lutnick says he's most proud of something else he's done for the families. As I hire their kids, I've got 60 children, people who died working here. 20 years later, the pain is still deep and Lotnick still encounters an occasional emotional moment. Sure, he told me, he does feel survivor's guilt, but he doesn't dwell on it. In the 20 years since that dark Tuesday in September, Lotnick has rebuilt his company and added subsidiaries with 12,000 employees worldwide. He says the tragedy of 9-11 has changed him and taught him an important lesson. I would say, live your life precious love it, enjoy it, and seek happiness. How poignant. In remembrance of the 658 employees lost, Cantor Fitzgerald hosts an annual charity day on September 11th. It has raised more than $350 million for various causes, including funds to support families impacted by terrorism. This year, Howard Lutnick will once again join families at the 9-11 Memorial Museum to celebrate the lives of those lost. I'm Marvin Scott, Pix11 News.